Hey guys, this is Josiah here. Welcome back to another episode of Josiah's Great Reviews. Uh, reviewing mostly the Bristol races from this past weekend from the, both the Truck Series and the Cup Series that we just saw last few days. Uh, I'll still mention the, the races that I didn't get to, that being, I think, basically all of them. The last race I reviewed was the Truck Race at Daytona, in which we, we saw Nick Sanchez collect his first career truck win. Um, Xfinity, I didn't really watch it, but Austin Hill got three straight Daytona wins. Daytona 500 was won by William Byron. You saw the big one right at the end. I think Byron was the one who caused it. I think he, I think he and Bo Bowman pushed Byron into everyone. Caused a big pileup. Uh, so it sucked to see right there. Um, looking at Atlanta, the truck race. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. It was Kyle Busch who won it. Uh, Xfinity was won by Austin Hill. Went back to back. On a field mileage race, sucks for Jesse Love because he dominated that race as a rookie. Ran out of gas while leading with two to go in the overtime restart. Sucks to see there. Uh, Cup, you saw the three-wide photo finish between Blaney, Bush, and Suarez. Dana Suarez got uh, like three one-thousandths of a second. Uh, won the race in three-wide action. Literally, like cars all over again with Lightning McQueen's tongue sticking out with the king. And then also Chick Hicks. I know y'all remember that. Classic. Cars is a classic. Then you got Las Vegas. Trucks was won by Raja Karuth. That was his first career truck series win. Xfinity won by John Hunter Nemechek. Uh, Cup was Kyle Larson. And then this last weekend at Phoenix, um, Trucks had the week off. Uh, Xfinity was won by Chandler Smith. Heartbreak for Justin Allgaier, who blew a tire while leading with five laps to go. That was awful to see for Justin Allgaier. Uh, that sucks. Uh, Chandler Smith won his second Xfinity Series race. He won Richmond last year in the spring. Um, Cup Series last week was won by Christopher Bell. He scored, I think, his seventh career uh, Cup win. Um, so, anyways, I apologize. I haven't been up to date. I will try to work on that. Um, be better at that because there's stuff I want to talk about. There's the, there's free agency. I want to talk about the free agency mostly for the Ravens. If not, or if if I can do that, then maybe I can recap. Uh, free agency in general because it was a crazy free agency frenzy that just went on that's still going on uh, right now there's still a bunch of free agents uh, if I look on screen yeah yeah okay I was, I was expecting to see a notification about something but no 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 um, anyway so the truck series Xfinity had the week off so it was just trucks and cup let's talk about the truck series race that was on last night um, yeah there wasn't much to talk about there was a wreck there was a couple of wrecks. I forgot who got the first spin. It was in lap 10 by some dude in the back. Um, and then right up front, while like right beside second place Taylor Gray, was guy like Stephen Parsons and Keith McGee were both racing, and Keith McGee spun around. Um, and I think that was all of like the wrecks. There was a wreck inside the top 10 with both Nick Sanchez and Stuart Friesen wrecking inside the top 10. And afterwards, they actually talked and eventually fought each other. A uh, bunch of pushing and shoving, which, as a Friesen fan, I don't know why he's mad. He basically wrecked himself. Nick Sanchez, either or either that or, or Nick Sanchez just went off the wall, bounced up into Friesen. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but either way, it was Christian Eckes who won redemption from last September when he lost the race within five to go. Uh, Corey Heim got by him last September and took the win away from him. Uh, Christian Eckes held off Kyle Busch, which is pretty impressive. I, I have the results right here. I'll read it off here and... Uh, I probably won't project him here because, you know, it's late. I got to get to bed. Uh, it's 10 16, and I got a school day tomorrow. Uh, so I got to get to that. Um, but, yeah, I apologize. I'll get up to date. Uh, but we got Eckes first, Kyle Bush second, Zane Smith was third, Matt Kraft, and for a second, he was going to snap the winless streak. Not quite. He finished his fourth. Tyler Ankrum's had a really good start to the season. Comes home fifth. Corey Heim is sixth, or was sixth. Uh, Taylor Gray, seventh. Raja Karuth. Uh, wasn't really up there much. He kind of fell back, then got up and finished inside the top 10. Grant Enfinger with CR7 Motorsports gets him a top 10. How about Lane Riggs getting a top 10? Uh, it's been an abysmal start for Lane Riggs in the 38, uh, but he got a top 10. Bailey Curry had a good finish. Caden Honeycutt was in the top 10 for most of the race, got a 12th place finish. Daniel Dye, Jake Garcia, Tanner Gray round out the top 15. Good runs for them. Ben Rhodes has had a horrible start to the season. Horrible. Um, I think he had contact with Ty Majeski. I remember that. He had contact with Ty Majeski while racing inside the top five. Um, so Thor Sport didn't really get a good lap there. Ben Rhodes came out to finish 16th, though. Nick Sanchez, after his contact with Friesen, 17th. Seven Parsons, 18th. Connor Jones, 19th. Ty Dillon, 20th. 
good runs for them. Uh, William Sawalich in his, uh, well, they get making a seventh truck start, uh, 21st. Stuart Friesen had a top 10 before his issue with Sanchez, 22nd. Dean Thompson, 23rd. Timmy Hill, Matt Mills round out the top 25. Thad Moff had been a rough start for him in his rookie campaign, 26. Lawless Allen, Mason Massey, Mason Maggio, and Spencer Boyd round out the top 30. Then you got Brett Holmes, Keith McGee, Chase Purdy, Ty Majeski, Trey Hutchins, and Justin Carroll are the the rest of the finishers, the 36 truck drivers. If I can look here and I can get a look at the point standings, see if I can get the point standings. Tyler Ankrum leads the points, followed by Haim, Carruth, Majeski, Ekis is top five, Sanchez, Gray, Kraft, Taylor Gray that is, then Kraft and Anfinger, Brett Holmes at the top 10. Uh, if you look at the playoffs for uh, the truck series, You've got uh, Tyler Ankrum, actually, again, plus 84. Carruth, Eckes, and Sanchez have already won, so they've clinched playoff spots. Um, Ankrum, plus 84. Haim is fifth, plus 67. Majeski, plus 55. Taylor Gray, plus 48. Matt Crafton, plus uh, 40. Uh, Grant Anfinger is plus 24. And Brett Holmes is plus 5, so they hold the, the 10 playoff spots. Uh, loving outside, looking in. I'll go through the next four. I'll read the, actually the top 15. Daniel Dye, minus 5. Tanner Gray, minus 9. Stuart Friesen, minus 10. Jake Garcia, minus 17. Also, Ben Rhodes, minus 17 as well. Um, See, so yeah, it just shows the top 20. Curry, minus 19. Timmy Hill, minus 29. Uh, Dean Thompson, minus 32. Spencer Boyd, minus 33. Caden Honeycutt, Razzle. The top 20 in the playoff points, minus 37. See if I can get a quick look here at Xfinity. Chandler Smith leads the points by one, just one point over Austin Hill. Cole Custer, uh, third. Erbst, Jesse Love, top five in points. Sheldon Creed, Allmendinger, Allgaier, Brandon Jones, and Sammy Smith round right out the top ten in the point standings. Looking here at the playoffs, both Chandler Smith, Austin Hill, both have wins. Clinched, locked in. Uh, plus 54, Cole Custer, Jesse Love, great rookie start. Uh, I think he finished second, actually, in the Phoenix race last week. A uh, good run for him, his first top 10, plus 39. Rodley Herbst is plus 50. Uh, this thing's all jumbled up, by the way. It's like out of order. Cup Series, I think the points is that way, too, so it's kind of weird. Sheldon Creed's plus 34. A.G. Almanier, plus 28. Allgaier, plus 23. Again, almost clinched a, clinched a playoff spot with his win. Um, but, obviously, the blown tire. That sucks. Brandon Jones, plus 22. Sammy Smith, plus 18. Uh, Parker Kligerman plus nine and Anthony Alfredo shout out to him P fast pasta plus two right now on the outside looking in uh, you got Ryan Sieg minus two Shane Van Gisbergen got a top 10 I think he got sixth at Las Vegas um, so the guy who made headlines for winning the Chicago Street Course in his debut the first Cup Series driver to win in his debut since like 19 what was it 58 60 62 61 I don't remember the date <laughs> I don't remember uh, Jeremy Clements, minus 25. Parker Retzloff, minus 28. Same goes for Brendan Poole, minus 28. Ryan Ellis, minus 29. Same with BJ McLeod. Leyland Honeyman, minus 30. That rounds up the top 20 in Xfinity Series points. Okay, now let's get to the main thing I want to talk about, which was the Cup Series that was run late, earlier today. The Food City 500. Bristol was back on the concrete in the spring for the first time since 2020. Man, oh man, was it a good thing that they did that because this race was chaotic crazy. Oh my goodness. It was like the best race and the worst race all at once. Uh, yeah, <laughs> good grief. Good freaking grief. That's all I got to say. To start out the race, uh, you had Ryan Blaney was on pole. Josh Berry was outside, had his best start. Barry took the lead, leading his first laps, and then I think the caution came out. Poor William Byron, the Daytona 500 champion, had issues, then uh left something, got debris or something that brought out the caution. Then Tyler, everyone pitted. Tyler Reddick stayed out. Not good for him because a lap or two later, he spun while leading. Uh, and guys like Barry, Bubba Wallace, Chase Elliott had to navigate. Uh, they all avoided, except for Zane Smith. He arca braked right into Tyler Reddick. Uh, Zane Smith uh, DNF pretty quickly. DNF in dead last. Zane Smith, tough break for him because he's had a really rough start to his rookie campaign. Uh, it's tough to see because especially his team is with Carson Hosevar, who's having a great rookie start. And Corey LaJoy, who's been pretty solid, got a fourth place in the Daytona 500 or whatever race that was. Um, sucks for Zane Smith. He was actually, the, besides how chaotic this race was, he, Zane Smith was the only DNF in this race, which is crazy to see. Um, trying to remember everything that happened. Uh, Chase Elliott, that was good to see him leading. He led, I think, a few laps. I think he led, Hedger, either him or Larson, led Hendrick Motorsports' 
80,000th lap in the Cup Series, which is absolutely crazy. Even more crazy than already being 10 minutes into this video. Good grief, this is going to be like an hour-long video. All right, good grief. Stage 1 and Stage 2 were both won by Ty Gibbs. This was the second week in a row we all thought for a moment that Ty Gibbs was actually going to cruise to his first career win. Uh, last week at Phoenix, we thought he had a good strategy, uh, but got passed by Bell. And then when Shurik had to pit while leading, I just hit the, with the thing. Um, he, Yeah, he fell back. I think he finished third. Uh, his best uh, Cup Series finish last week at Phoenix. And then led a bunch of laughs, swept the stages. Uh, not, not not quite his day. Um, but the why this race was so good is because the... And this was the issue for guys yesterday in practice and qualifying. As practice went on and as qualifying went on, the NASCAR, they added resin to the bottom groove. And it's different from what they did. They used uh, PJ1, I think, before. They used it at Phoenix a few years ago also. And what happened was eventually as the run went on, you saw in the upper groove, almost like a cheese grater, like the tie, like the rubber just disintegrated, like a cheese grater went right through and just Larry Max on his cheese grater. It's just like grinding all this tire. Who remembers that? Who remembers that from Larry Mack? Good grief. Uh, gee, gee, geez. All right. Um, that's what that was like. And it got so bad that uh, NASCAR said, hey, you guys can get one extra set of tires so you got, you guys, I think right before stage two, right before the restart, before stage two, you saw they cut to the garage and you see guys like emergency tire process, just trying to get the tires. And it wasn't fun for them, but it was fun for me as a fan watching this because I love attrition races because you never know what happens in those races. And you saw like the long runs, you saw 40 laps in, you saw drivers start to lose grip. Guys who are up front, guys like Josh Berry, Ty Gibbs, Todd Gilliland, guys who aren't experienced start to fall off. And yeah, it, it, then these veterans, you know, the Hamlin, Shurex, Elliott, guys who can you know how to save, you start to see them go up through the field. Chase Elliott, though, um, I'll, I'll get to the finishing results in a minute. I mentioned he led a few laps, fell back. He actually had a voltage issue, a battery issue, um, which it made it sound like he was only going to race for about 200 laps before the battery was going to die. Uh, yeah, that didn't never happen. I thought because he was running outside the top 20. And then uh, the final stage, as there were those two long runs, especially that last run, Chase Elliott, no low key, went from 20th all the way up to 5th in like a matter of 15 laps. So that was absolutely crazy. And that helped him get a really good finish, really what he needed. Um, but the two guys who were battling for the win at the end of this were the Toyota JGR guys, uh, Danny Hamlin and Martin Shrex Jr. Uh, both of them in heavy lap traffic, which made things chaotic along the way. Sure, Hamlin had the lead. Shurex got by him with under 20 to go. Hamlin got by right back with a few laps later. Didn't look back. Danny Hamlin got his fourth Bristol win. And I think his, I don't remember how many wins he has. He has over 60, 50 or 60. Not sure, but Denny, I think he has, I think he has like over 50. Denny Hamill won back-to-back uh, -back for him. He won the Bristol race last September. He beat our favorite drivers. Yip, yip, whip, dee doo We don't care. You don't have a championship yet. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, let's look at the finishing results now. Denny Hamill won the race. Martin Shrek Jr. second. Tough break for him. Brad Keselowski, um, you know, RFK, I had a feeling that both of them were going to do well. Keselowski got up there and finished third. Alex Boma, also like Chase Elliott, got up there late, got a fourth place finish. Kyle Larson, another HMS guy, was fifth. John Hunter Nemechek with a career best finish for him, a sixth. Good to see. Um, I think at the end of this, five five guys were on the lead lap at the end of this race. And that's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I keep having to take breaths because I, I need some water or something. I don't have water in here. I have it out there. Okay, I almost need to get water. Hold on, I'll be right back. All right, I apologize for that. I had to go get a quick drink of water. I got my Propel water right here. Not sponsored, but I wish I was sponsored. But anyways, I think I was on Chris Busher. Like I mentioned, his teammate, both uh, Kislowski finished third. Busher finished seventh. He won the Bristol race in September 2022. Very solid top 10 run for him. This might be the happiest I've been about a top 10, but Chase Elliott got an eighth place finish. I saw on Twitter, actually, that before this, he had an eight race Top 10 winless streak, if you will. That was the longest uh, streak he's gone without a top 10. Dating back to, I think, like the Roval or like some race in the playoffs last fall. <laughs> it was crazy. The fact that th this was also the first time that he went the first four races without a top 10 finish. On the flip side of that, he's finished top 20 in all five races. So that's I think that's the only time he's done that. Maybe not. Who knows? 
Uh, but either way, for his first top 10 of the season, got an 8th place finish. Good run for him. Ty Gibbs, I mentioned, could have won this race. Failed that tonight. Christopher Bell, last week's winner. Same thing. He was another one of the guys that fell back. He finished 10th. <sighs> Still trying to catch my breath. I don't know why. I'm like, I'm talking. I always know. Y'all Y'all know I talk really fast. And good grief. I gotta, like, slow down here. All right. Let's get cool comment collected. Michael McDowell was 11th. Josh Berry was 12th. He, again, ran up front. I think he, he spun multiple times, had multiple issues. I think he was third with, like, 10 to go and then fell back to 12th. So it sucks for him. Chase Briscoe, 13th. His team, Ryan Priest, who's still... Priest and Gregson both penalized with their, uh, something with the parts or whatever. Uh, Priest, I think, is, like, out at the top 30 in points. Needed a good run. Got 14th. Ross Chastain, 15th. Ryan Blaney, 16th. Didn't really do much at all. Justin Haley was top 10. Uh, at one point, thought we were going to get see a Haley top 10. Not quite. Fell back to 17th. Again, another one of those guys. Inexperienced as a cup driver. Fell back. Dino Suarez, 18th. Kaz Garella, 19th. Another Rick Ricard having a solid run. Eric Jones ends up running out, uh, running, running out the top 20. Core of the Joy. There wasn't really much of a factor. 21st. Uh, Joe Logano, 22nd. Uh, what what the heck is up with Joe Logano? Uh, like... <laughs> His luck this season has been atrocious. These first five races, uh, at both the Daytona 500 for certain, and then Atlanta probably also, he probably had the best car in both those races. He crashed out in both of those races. And then Las Vegas got ninth. He crashed out again last week after getting basically uh, wrecked by John Onimacek. Uh The drama continues there. I think they're racing at one point. Uh, got it together a little bit. Fell back to 22nd. Not good for him. Edge Almeninger, 23rd. Austin Dillon, 24th. G glad he finished the race because I think b coming into this race, he had wrecked uh, before lap 10 in three of the four races. So another one of those guys back there trying to get some points. Kyle Busch, a rough day for him, 25th. He was racing up front with the lead at one point, but at the end of stage one, he was one of those guys who fell back with a, a tire, actually blew a tire, spun around. He spun again later on in the race, so rough for him. Yeah, when Kyle Busch does not do well at Bristol, you have a problem. Uh, it's 25th for him. Ty Gillen ran outside the top, or ran inside the top 10 for some portions of the race. Fell back in experience again. Bit him in the butt. 26. Carson Hosevar was a no show. I think he was involved in the Reddick wreck because when Reddick and Zane Smith wrecked, there was a big pile up in the back. Uh, Hosevar was in it. He finished 27th. Hemrick was also in it. He had other issues. I think he hit the wall late in this race. 28th. I don't really know what happened to Bo Wallace, but he finished 29th. Again, a lot happened, so yeah, I'm probably missing stuff. Tyler Reddick, 30th, not good for him. Sindrick, 31st, not sure what's up. Harrison Burton, Ricky Stenhouse, Noah Gregson. Yeah, they're just terrible days. I think Gregson also got up in the wall, which sucks for Gregson because even with also getting the same penalty as Priest, he's had, I think, like two or three top 10 finishes. Great start to the season for Gregson. As a Gregson fan, I love to see it. William Byron, I mentioned he had issues uh, with uh, early in this race. He was, I think, was the first guy to have issues. 35th, didn't really do well. Zane Smith was the one DNF in 36th position. Ladies and gentlemen, see if I can hopefully catch my breath here. I, I can't. Like, I don't know why. Like, I need to... Y'all got to stay hydrated. And that goes... There goes my phone. Good grief. Not sponsored, by the way. Not sponsored. This is why I got 90 subscribers. I can't do crap, bro. Okay. All right. Kyle Larson leads the points. Actually, no, 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 no. He and Truex are tied in points right now. One, two as they run. Third place. Can we give a round of applause to Ty Gibbs? You know, this say sophomore slump. I'm not seeing a sophomore slump at all for Ty Gibbs. He's seven points back in third. Blaney came in as the points lead but struggled. He's eight points back. Hamlin is fifth, 12 points back. Chase Elliott, six, 33 points back. Chastain, 7, 34 points back. Christopher Bell, 8, 47 points back. Reddick, 9th, 48 points back. Byron is 10th, running out the top 10, 49 points back. And looking here at the playoffs, again, Larson, Hamlin, Bell, Byron, Suarez all have wins locked into the playoffs, at least for right now. We'll see if we get we'll see if we get more than 16 wins. It's been close a couple times, including 2022. We'll see. Wouldn't be surprised if it happens this year. Who knows? Uh, Truex is plus 75 to the good. Gibbs plus 68, Blaney plus 67, Elliott plus 42, Chastain plus 41, Red, or, uh, yeah, Reddick plus 27, Bowman plus 22, Busher plus 14, Keselowski plus 15, 
uh, Bush plus 12, and then Nemeter plus 14. First four guys round on the top 20 on the outside looking in. You've got Michael McDowell minus 12, Bubba Wallace minus 15, same with Briscoe minus 15. Eric Jones rounds out the top 20 in the playoff standings minus 21. I'm looking here, Logano with 48 points back. Ouch, in 26. Same with Barry, Austin Hill minus 63. Goodness, rough, rough starts for both of them. Let's see if I look at the driver standings. Let's see where the guy is. Let's see. You got these guys like Johnson, Kraus, Reagan, who are not full time. My the Gregson thirty second in points. Priest is thirty fourth in points. Uh, Joe Logano is twenty sixth in points. Goodness gracious. Yeah, rough for rough start to the season for uh, Joe Logano again. Hasn't won since uh, Atlanta. I think that's about a year ago. Uh, so rough. Rough for him in this 2024 season. I can finally catch my breath. This video is over. Hope you guys enjoyed me losing my breath and all that. This was a crazy Bristol race. Probably, I think they said it was the most lead changes. Not just for Bristol, but a short track. I think it was 54. The previous record was like 50. Not, not 50, 40. Back in 1991. So crazy there. that we hit a lot, a lot of lead changes. A lot of different leaders. Tire wear, it was like 2008, Brick to 400, part two. Good grief. And I never saw the race. I was one year old. I didn't know what the earth was when I was one. So don't judge me there. But hope you guys did enjoy this episode of Decided Good Reviews. Hopefully I, you guys do enjoy and hopefully I stay up to date with free agency, NASCAR, all that stuff. Find a better way to do this because good grief. I need to get in shape, out of breath while talking and yapping for 22 minutes. That's not a good sign. But anyways, hope you guys smash like, subscribe. Hit the notification bell that way you never miss any new videos like this one. As always, you know me. I don't support clout. Just do it as a suggestion by me. And as always, I'll see you guys whenever this next video comes out. Who knows? I'm inconsistent with uploads. Hopefully, I'll try and be as consistent as possible. It could be tomorrow. It could be in a couple weeks. Who knows? See you guys. Bye.